I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! You keep digging! Well, excuse me. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. I'll give you a little time. Thank you. And if you're already a subscriber, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the video, today's video is about how I stay motivated while studying for the MCAT. And hopefully you can take these tips and work that into your MCAT journey because I know if no one else knows that the MCAT is hard. Y'all seen the ad, the MCAT is hard. It's not about how, how much you prepare, it's about how well you prepare. Well, during that preparation stage, I wanna let you know that it is not gonna be easy. Like, and I'm not talking about content wise, I'm talking about mentally. Like for me, studying for the MCAT has opened my eyes for, to a lot of things and different aspects of my life as well as taking a mental toll on me. So I really had to get grounded and I wrote down some tips and things on what helps me stay motivated. As y'all can see, yellow is my favorite color. Um, I wrote down some tips and tricks on how I'm navigating through the MCAT journey and hopefully these tips work for you. Make sure you drop a comment below explaining how you stay motivated through the MCAT because I could use some more tips as well because it's hard. So without further ado, I've been talking for like a minute. Let's jump right into the video. <laughs> okay, step one. Before you even get started studying, I'm talking about before you even crack open any form of book, write down your why. Remember your why and write it down detailed. Don't just say, I want to be a doctor because I want to help people. Because when you get to those days where you just feel like, why am I studying for this? Why am I putting myself through this stress, through this strain? And you go back to read your why and say, it says, I want to be a doctor to help people. Your mind mentally, your mind literally says like, girl, you can help people in other ways. Like you ain't got to do this. You need to write it down in detail. For me, my why is many reasons number one I, I want to be an obstetrician gynecologist to help women um and not just help women but when they walk into the room black women walk into the room i want them to feel comfortable with sharing information with me um i don't want them to feel embarrassed i want to be that person that they can come to when they're experiencing things with their body that they're too afraid to say to others also i want to be a doctor for the people in my community who also want to be doctors but feel like man this is too hard i can't do it i need to be, be that person in the community that says okay kayla did it so can i so i want you to write down your why in detail so that the days where it gets hard you can go back and read it and get regrounded refocus and all of those things that brings me to step two don't be afraid to fail okay and this is something that i really struggle with and i still struggle with today it is march 20th or 23rd i don't know the day it's march something my exam is in less than a month and every time i take a practice exam and my score isn't where it's at i get a little fearful so for me i really had to hone in on why am i why am i so scared don't be afraid to fail if you're failing that means you're doing something right if you're achieving if you're striving for your goals and you're failing that means you're doing something right because you are learning so i want you to know right now do not be afraid to fail don't say like when you get that score back from your MCAT or, you know, maybe you didn't get the MCAT score that you wanted on a practice exam or heck, maybe you took the real exam and it's not the score that you want. Don't say why me. Say try me. You get ready. But post up. Post up. Do not fall back. Lean forward. Of course, I want you to take some time to um, reassess and take some time for yourself to get mentally focused. But I also don't want you to give up on your dreams due to a failure. Because like I was just telling my little sister, 
Um, she wants to be pre-medicine, but she was like, I really don't want to fool with the MCAT. And I'm like, it doesn't matter which path you take to life. There are going to be trials and tribulations, and there are going to be moments in your life where you fail. And that's just real, y'all. I'm keeping it a book. We keep it a book on this channel. There are going to be times in your life where you fail, and you fail hard. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter about how hard you fail or how hard you fall. It matters about how you get up. Are you going to get up and walk away or are you getting up and like, I'm posting up? So for me, that is something I really had to, had to realize that, girl, you're going to fail, but you need to keep going. If you fail and just sit and soak in that moment and you say, I can't do this, well, you're back to point A. You can either fail and keep going, review the exam, see what you got wrong, see why you got it wrong, and keep moving forward. And that's all you can do because... At the end of the day, you can only change what you can control. And honestly, I think that's one of my steps. So I didn't give y'all a little preview of what's to come next. Step three, take a break. This is something I also struggle with. Um, take a break. You need that time. For me, I am involved in a lot of things that I am an auntie to five nieces and nephews. I work two jobs. I am a business owner. Make sure you go follow my business page. It's going to be right here. I'm a business owner. I'm a pre-medical student. I am a peer mentor on my campus. So I'm involved in a lot of things. And I had to realize that if I'm not good, if if my cup is empty, I can't pour into others. As much as I want to be a servant to others, and that's my ultimate goal in life is to be a servant. In order to be a servant, you have to have something to serve. So I had to realize that taking a break, taking a break and mentally preparing myself for whatever is to come next in within a week, I need that. So Sundays are my day. I don't pick up a phone. I don't pick up a book. Sometimes I pick up a book, but like that whole day is not just centered around study, study, work, work. I don't work on Sundays. You need that break. Self-care is so essential when studying for the MCAT because the whole time we are preparing for this test to help others. But the only way you can help others is if you help yourself. You can't walk. What patient wants to walk into a room with someone who isn't mentally stable? You're not. You're not giving your best self to that person. So, and and with, let me let me clear my throat because <laughs> I'm getting into it, y'all. I'm I'm really preaching to myself. That's why, I, like, I'm literally trying not to cry because I'm preaching to myself right now. But studying for this test. The only way to give this test your 100% self is to, you need to recharge, refocus. You can't be giving to other people, giving to other things if you have nothing to give. So it is so important. I don't care if you maybe missed out on some content a day. Um, Monday, you missed out on content, but you knew your self-care day was Sunday. So you're like, well, I need to, you know, I mean, I'm going to skip my self-care this week. No, you deserve it. I know somebody is watching this right now like, girl, look, you probably got a you probably got a 528. I don't deserve this. I need to keep going. I don't care what score you have. You are what's mo most important here, not the MCAT score. The only way that you will be a successful physician is if we have you, 100% you, not 20%. We need you. So that's what I want you all to do. This is how I stay motivated. I take a break. I do what's important to me, whether that's going home to family, whether that's going to get my toes done, going to the spa, walking around. It doesn't matter what it is. Or, it's, hey, it could be just be laying on my bed for that day. Like, I don't have to do nothing. Take that day. You need that day. You need that break. And that's just that on it. So that brings me to tip number four. Only focus on what you can control. 
yeah a lot of us in pre-med we are leaders on our campus we are leaders in our family leaders in our community and we are always in control of something right so when you're approaching this exam and you're not seeing the score that you want um you ju you're just not up to doing the content or like you just like i've been studying 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 i don't have my score what is it you can't control that only thing you can control is how you prepare for this exam you can't control what score comes on what on the aamc website you can't control what score pops up only thing you can control is how you prepare for this exam and this is something i really had to deal with um not seeing my score i'm like so used to being in control of everything and if 2020 didn't teach us anything it taught us girl you are not in control this pandemic is very much still here you're not in control of anything this snowstorm that we just had down in the south this ice storm we had that show we're not in control we can't control the weather only thing you can focus on is what you can control and that's what keeps me motivated that's what keeps me sane and knowing that i just need to do my part if i did my part and i didn't see my score well that's okay because i know i did my part i'm gonna keep i'm gonna try again and do my part and see reassess and see what i need to do again but only thing i can focus on right now in this moment is how i can prepare because my exam isn't in the next minute it's not in the next second i'm not taking the exam right now only thing i'm doing right now is preparing for the exam so i can't worry about my score right now i just need to worry about how i prepare for this exam so that's something to keep in mind as you're studying for this exam because you are going to hit some dark places you are going to hit some hard rocks and you're going to want to give up because you can't control these stop being so addicted to results that's tip five actually because i didn't have this written down but i did it just coming to me don't be addicted to results that's the only way to stay motivated during this through this setup. That's the only way to stay motivated while studying for the MCAT is break your addiction to results. Break it right now. Don't be so addicted to what, you know, um, I need an A plus in this class. I need an A plus in this class while studying for the MCAT. I need a 532. I need this. I need that. I need this. No, don't think about the numbers. Think about quality of preparation. Don't think about the numbers right now. I want you to think about the numbers when you take your exam and they send you your um, results that month later. That's when you can think about the numbers. You can't think about the numbers right now. Break your addiction to results right now. And that's the only way you will stay motivated because when I tell you there's going to be a time where you take a practice exam, you've been studying for weeks, you take a practice exam and you don't see the score you want to see. You are addicted to results. You are going to, one, it's two ways. You are either going to, one, fall back and feel like I'm not studying for this no more. I've been studying for weeks and I don't see my results, so I'm sick of it. I'm done. Or two, you're going to go into overdrive. You're going to be working every day, working every day, working every, every day to get a score, to see a score, and then you're going to burn out. So break your addiction to results right now. Right now. That brings me to tip number five, stay affirmed. Um, while you're studying for the MCAT, <laughs> you might run into some imposter syndrome. Like, okay, I've been in undergrad for four years, or maybe you are more of a non-traditional path and you've already went through undergrad, you've been through a master's program, you're studying for this exam, and you don't see results at all. You like, hold on. Am I good enough for this? I didn't went through college all these years and I don't know none of this stuff. You're going to reach that point and I want you to stay affirmed before you even start studying for this exam. Write you some sticky notes and post it all on your wall. You are beautiful. You are brilliant. You are smart. You are capable. I am who God says I am. Write those things down and read them every day because it's going to get hard and you need to realize and instead of for me i am the only one of my friends who is pre-medicine 
my friends are pre-vet or are either in business or kinesiology or nursing. And I'm the only one who's pre-med. So I can't outsource to my friends and be like, hey, y'all, look, sometimes you just can't outsource to people because they don't understand. So the reason why I said stay affirmed, because instead of reaching outsourcing, you're going to have to insource. Reach within yourself and um, realize that you are adequate. <laughs> our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure and if you're watching this i believe in you if no one else believes in you i know it's hard i know it's hard this is coming from someone who has been studying since november i know it's hard but you gotta keep going i want you to remember your why your why needs you you have to keep going and that brings me to my last tip of this video, and that is to pray. This is the last but most important tip, and it's the only thing that has been getting me through my MCAT process, is pray. And you don't have to do a phony prayer like, you know, oh, just help me study for this content. And if, if this your prayer, you can say that just study, but you need to be honest in your prayer like, Lord, I've been studying for months. I don't see the results, but I trust you. Lord, help me to remove any form of anxiety that is in my body. Lord, help me to approach each and every day knowing that I am confident because I have you. You have to say that and you have to mean it. And I know it's some people watching this video and like, girl, I'm not trying to hear that. I'm stressed out. And you might be stressed out, but what I want you to know is don't give up. Do not give up. Roll your works unto the Lord. He will cause your thoughts. This is something I always think about, y'all. This is why I start. <laughs> this right here, it says, roll your works unto the Lord. He will cause your thoughts to be agreeable to his will so that your plans will succeed. I don't even think that needs further elaboration. Give it to God. This is not going to be easy. Take some time to realign. <laughs> don't give up though. We need you. You are so special. There isn't a doctor out there likes you, like you. There is going to be a patient who needs you one day. And only you. You'll be the only doctor that can help them. You can do this. I don't care if you hit a hard patch, you've hit a rock. I want you to keep going. But as you keep going, I need you to realize we need you. So that means you need to be taking a break, going to therapy if needed, praying, staying in touch with your family. Don't get isolated during this time. This is when you need to lock in to people. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, make sure you drop a comment um, describing. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure you drop a comment explaining what keeps you motivated or how you stay motivated during this journey. And just link up with some people in the comments. I mean, explain to me how your MCAT journey has been treating you. This is a community. We have to stay together, y'all. If not, we'll all fail. We, it's hard. It is hard. But in the end, I need you all to know that I'm here. Drop a comment below. If you're going through something, drop a comment below. Let's have a conversation in the comments. That's why I have this YouTube channel, to stay connected with you all. Um, That's really all I have to say for this video. Um, That's really all I have to say for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure you all like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And that's all. As always, love K. Will. I hope you have a wonderful week. <laughs>